Chapter 6 The Shaking November 20, 1857 I was shown the people of God and saw them mightily shaken. Some, with strong faith and agonizing cries, were pleading with God. Their countenances were pale and marked with deep anxiety expressive of their internal struggle. Firmness and great earnestness were expressed in their countenances, while large drops of perspiration fell from their foreheads. Now and then their faces would light up with the marks of God's approbation, and again the same solemn, earnest, anxious look would settle upon them. Joel 2, 15-17 says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? James 4, 7 to 10 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Zephaniah 2, 1-3 says, Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as a shaft, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness, it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Evil angels crowded around them, pressing their darkness upon them to shut out Jesus from their view, that their eyes might be drawn to the darkness that surrounded them, and they distrust God and next murmur against him. Their only safety was in keeping their eyes directed upward. Angels of God had charge over his people, and as the poisonous atmosphere from the evil angels was pressed around these anxious ones, the heavenly angels were continually wafting their wings over them to scatter the thick darkness. Some, I saw, did not participate in this work of agonizing and pleading. They seemed indifferent and careless. They were not resisting the darkness around them, and it shut them in like a thick cloud. The angels of God left these, and I saw them hastening to the assistance of those who were struggling with all their energies to resist the evil angels and trying to help themselves by calling upon God with perseverance. But the angels left those who made no effort to help themselves, and I lost sight of them. As the praying ones continued their earnest cries, a ray of light from Jesus would at times come to them to encourage their hearts and light up their countenances. I asked the meaning of the shaking I had seen and was shown that it would be caused by the straight testimony called forth by the counsel of the true witness to the Laodiceans. This will have its effect upon the heart of the receiver and will lead him to exalt the standard and pour forth the straight truth. Some will not bear this straight testimony. They will rise up against it, and this will cause a shaking among God's people. The testimony of the true witness has not been half heeded. The solemn testimony upon which the destiny of the church hangs has been lightly esteemed, if not entirely disregarded. This testimony must work deep repentance, and all that truly receive it will obey it and be purified, said the angel, List ye. Soon I heard a voice that sounded like many musical instruments, all in perfect strains, sweet and harmonious. It surpassed any music I had ever heard. It seemed to be so full of mercy, compassion, and elevating holy joy. It thrilled through my whole being, said the angel, Look ye. My attention was then turned to the company I had seen who were mightily shaken. 
I was shown those whom I had before seen weeping and praying with agony of spirit. The company of guardian angels around them had been doubled, and they were clothed with an armor from their head to their feet. They moved in exact order, firmly, like a company of soldiers. Their countenances expressed the severe conflict which they had endured, the agonizing struggle they had passed through. Yet their features, marked with severe internal anguish, now shone with the light and glory of heaven. They had obtained the victory, and it called forth from them the deepest gratitude and holy, sacred joy. The numbers of this company had lessened. Some had been shaken out and left by the way. Revelation 3, 15 to 17 says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. The careless and indifferent, who did not join with those who prized victory and salvation enough to be perseveringly plead and agonize for it, did not obtain it and they were left behind in darkness. But their numbers were immediately made up by others, taking hold of the truth and coming into the ranks. Still the evil angels pressed around them, but they could have no power over them. Ephesians six twelve to 18 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I heard those clothed with the armor speak forth the truth in great power, it had effect. I saw those who had been bound. Some wives had been bound by their husbands, and some children had been bound by their parents. The honest who had been held or prevented from hearing the truth now eagerly laid hold of it. All fear of their relatives was gone. The truth alone was exalted to them. It was dearer and more precious than life. They had been hungering and thirsting for truth. I asked what had made this great change. An angel answered, It is the latter rain, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, the loud cry of the third angel. Great power was with these chosen ones. Said the angel, Look ye. My attention was turned to the wicked or unbelievers. They were all astir. The zeal and power with the people of God had aroused and enraged them. Confusion, confusion was on every side. I saw measures taken against this company who had the power and light of God. Darkness thickened around them, yet there they stood, approved of God and trusting in Him. I saw them perplexed. Next I heard them crying unto God earnestly. Through the day and night their cry ceased not. Luke 18, 7 and 8 says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? See also Revelation 14, 14 and 15. I heard these words, Thy will, O God, be done. If it can glorify thy name, make a way of escape for thy people. Deliver us from the heathen round about us. They have appointed us unto death, but thine arm can bring salvation. These are all the words that I can bring to mind. 
all seemed to have a deep sense of their unworthiness and manifested entire submission to the will of God. Yet, like Jacob, every one, without an exception, was earnestly pleading and wrestling for deliverance. Soon after they had commenced their earnest cry, the angels in sympathy would have gone to their deliverance, but a tall commanding angel suffered them not. Said he, The will of God is not yet fulfilled. They must drink of the cup. They must be baptized with the baptism. Soon I heard the voice of God which shook the heavens and the earth. Joel 3.16 says, the Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. See also Hebrews 12:26 and Revelation 16:17. There was a mighty earthquake. Buildings were shaken down and fell on every side. I then heard a triumphant shout of victory, loud, musical, and clear. I looked upon this company who a short time before were in such distress and bondage. Their captivity was turned. A glorious light shone upon them. How beautiful they then looked! All weariness and marks of care were gone. Health and beauty were seen in every countenance. Their enemies, the heathen around them, fell like dead men. They could not endure the light that shone upon the delivered holy ones. This light and glory remained upon them until Jesus was seen in the clouds of heaven, and the faithful tried company were changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, from glory to glory. The graves were opened, and the saints came forth, clothed with immortality, crying, Victory over death and the grave! And together with the living saints they were caught up to meet their Lord in the air, while rich musical shouts of glory and victory proceedeth from every immortal tongue.